Did we learn anything new or was it more of the same? I think for people who are not in the Jewish community following this story closely, I think there was a lot to learn. I mean, you saw members of the Labour Party hounded out uh, for being Jewish. Uh, you saw employees working in the disciplinary process being systematically ignored, then harangued and then harassed and smeared um, for doing their job. And you saw, unfortunately, real evidence of political interference in the disciplinary process by the office of the leader of the opposition uh, getting in the way of the Labour Party trying to deal with anti-Semitism. And I'm afraid from watching uh, last night's programme, it really is no surprise to any of us that the Equalities and Human Rights Commission is now investigating the Labour Party to try and ascertain whether it is in fact institutionally uh, prejudiced and discriminating against Jewish people. Well, this is, it, a lot of this is, is comes down to why people who want to be members of the Labour Party and feel that they have a home in the Labour Party since Jeremy Corbyn's leadership, why do they feel that that, that is a place for them where they hold anti-Semitic views, but also these accusations that Jeremy Corbyn's office have been involved in this disciplinary process when it's supposed to be at arm's length. Uh, we've seen a tra an email trail. Uh, the Labour Party, though, to be fair, they've issued a statement. The spokesman said Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party are fully committed to the support, defence and celebration of the Jewish community and implacably opposed to anti-Semitism in any form. They say there's been a deeply worrying rise in anti-Semitism in the UK and across Europe. We've strengthened our procedures and increased the rate at which anti-Semitism cases have been dealt with fourfold. Uh, they also point out that uh, one of the rather more damaging bits of evidence presented last night uh, and again a lot of this goes into sort of quite minute detail uh, is about uh, they say that one of the claims uh, it was a quotation from an email sent uh, by Seamus Milne the director of communications uh, to Jeremy Corbyn uh, in which um, he is uh, said something's going wrong and we're muddling up political disputes with racism I think going forward we need to review where and how we're drawing the line now this was uh, viewed to be rather damning an email sent in March 2018 however Labour Party says the full sentence uh, doesn't start with uh, something's going wrong it says, but if we're more than very occasionally using disciplinary action against Jewish members for anti-Semitism, something's going wrong and we're muddling up political disputes with racism. Um, that is a fair criticism, I mean, uh, uh, not using the full sentence, not even the full email, the full sentence behind that, uh, which does put a slightly different slant on Seamus Milne's um, interference there. Well, let me pick on a, a different item from my own experience. Well, could you I, tackle that aspect? Well, I, what I will talk about, I think what, what this, this was trying to identify is what we've long suspected, that there is political interference in the disciplinary process. So just after that revelation in the same programme, there was reference uh, to an incident involving a case uh, involving a lady called Jackie Walker, who had been accused uh, of, of anti-Semitic incidents by describing, for example, Jews as responsible for uh, the slave trade. Now, two weeks before, um, I was part of a delegation that met Jeremy Corbyn, Seamus Millman, Jenny Formby, and we asked in that meeting for high profile cases such as that of Jackie Walker to be dealt with swiftly. In the programme last night, there was a revelation that just two weeks after that meeting and that request, Jenny Formby, the General Secretary, sought to intervene politically uh, in that case. And as a result, that case was not dealt with for another nine months. Now, from a party that has consistently said that it has zero tolerance for anti-Semitism and wants to take fast, rapid and visible action to deal with it, taking more than nine months to deal with a case that had already been dragging on for, for, 12 year, for over 12 months is not Zero uh, and, tolerance. And in sharp contrast, of course, to Alistair Campbell saying he'd voted for the Liberal Democrats, the European uh, Parliament elections. Well, he, and He uh, was and thrown the, out the next morning. Well, yeah, so, OK, so they, so they can act quickly when they want, of course, rather more clear cut some of those instances. Um, if, if, it is, if we are looking at a level of political interference from Jeremy Corbyn's office, which is what was being alleged by a lot of these people, um, what happens now? Is anything going to change? Because it seems to me the reaction looking on social media last night was very much those who support Jeremy Corbyn are standing by him and say, look, you know, this is just, you know, either smears or same old, same old, uh, doesn't change anything. Uh, that, you know, th these are people who are talking from a time when, uh, look, it, you know, things were very slow. They needed to get more people in. They've, now, they've said in their statement they've now massively speeded up uh, by four times uh, the rate at which they're dealing with these cases. We've seen Chris Williamson and the like, uh, a Labour MP now being suspended. Uh, resuspend, uh, readmitted, resuspended in the space of 24 hours. Um, they're saying, look, they're, all, they're getting on top of this now. There's just this big backlog. Um, people who are critical of Jeremy Corbyn will say, ah, oh, here we are. Here's the evidence. We've known this all along. Is anyone's mind going to be changed by this documentary? 
look, in the end, this is not a, a, a battle for, for sort of public ap appeal. This is about making a real and significant change in the Labour Party, where you have Jewish members who no longer feel that it's a home for them. We met with Jeremy Corbyn, as I've said, over 12 months ago. One of the things we asked for was an independent process, a genuinely independent process that is overseen independently. Now, what was evident from last night's programme is that the Labour Party is crying out for that independent process. It is so susceptible to political manipulation where those people who are deemed to be friendly to the leader or those who's, uh, who, if they were to be punished, it would be damaging to the leader are dealt with differently. When they say that they've speeded up the processes, they have, but they were glacial before that. Okay. So I'm afraid that we as a community, particularly after last night's programme, do not have confidence that the correct action is being taken or that there is the real political will at the top of the Labour Party to take the necessary action. You're saying basically that this isn't going to be dealt with while Jeremy Corbyn is still leader. Do you believe that he is, I mean, with former chief rabbi, board of deputies of British Jews, so, you know, do you believe that he is anti-Semitic? As one of the uh, interviewees last night said, that, that's not really the point. The, the, the real is question it? is, the real question is that under his leadership, a culture has been allowed to flourish in which anti-Semitism is tolerated. And whilst Jeremy Corbyn fervently believes that he is not an anti-Semite, unfortunately, his own view of that means that he has he buys into the type of conspiracy theories that were revealed in that programme uh, last night okay. and that, that, that unfortunately mean that it is not an unreasonable conclusion to come to the fact that he is tolerant of anti-Semites. Do you expect, as a result of this, that things are going to be different next Monday morning to what they were last Monday morning? And what do you want to happen? Well, I don't think they'll change. There's a lot of shooting the messenger going on. I mean, those brave people who used to work uh, in the, in the uh, leader's office who came out are being roundly condemned and attacked by allies and friends of Jeremy Corbyn. The eight, and even got the letters uh, from Carter Ruck about their non-disclosure right. agreements. The, the eight members, including Izzy Lenger, uh, brave members of the Labour Party who've been hounded out uh, are themselves being criticised. I think the only thing that's going to change now is if the Equalities and Human Rights Commission comes out with a report at the end of this year that confirms what we believe believe that the Labour Party is institutionally racist against Jewish people. That will then impose legal obligations on the Labour Party to take the action that we, the Jewish community, have been calling out for them to take for the last 18 months. Ben Westerman uh, was uh, on the disputes panel of the Labour Party and he spoke out about his concerns. And I'd like to say he joins us now. Good morning to you, Ben. Morning. Good morning. Um, now, um, you're one of a number of people who uh, chose to speak out. Uh, wh why, for, why did you decide at this point uh, to go public? Um, because it was the right thing to do. Um, quite frankly, what, what we saw was, was harrowing and heartbreaking. And um, to see it denied and covered up um, repeatedly in the press was, was just too much to take. Um, um, and so we felt we had to do something. You were an investigations officer with the Labour Party in 2016, 2017 on that disputes panel. You're Jewish yourself, the only, I think, the only Jewish person uh, on that panel, you said. <laughs> what were you seeing that was so harrowing? And, and did you speak out about it at the time? Yes, absolutely. Um, so it was the kind of constant stream of, of appalling images, comments, messages, um, both from members, kind of lay members, as it were, um, right the way to the top of the party um, and the tolerance of that so the kind of the denial of the problem um, the fact that people weren't weren't expelled the fact that there was as we saw last night interference to protect people I mean, there are lots of allegations in terms of, yes, yeah, Seamus Milne, uh, the director of communications, and Carrie Murphy, uh, the, uh, Tory, 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 the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn's uh, chief of staff, um, sort of interfering in these processes and, uh, and sort of say, slowing it down when it came to someone who was regarded as a Corbynista, uh, speeding it up when it, when it wasn't someone who was their supporter. Um, was it ever completely blatant? We saw some emails, we've seen some exchanges of emails, there's some revelations that some email trails have been deleted. Was it ever blatant enough that you thought about going, for instance, to Jeremy Corbyn himself and saying, look, this is a problem? Um, well, it would be very difficult for, for a normal member of staff to, to go to the leader himself. But yes, it was certainly blatant. And what, what, what we saw last night um, on the documentary was just the tip of the iceberg, really. Um, and the, the statutory investigation that the um, EHRC are launching will, will I'm sure, now find 
um, the institutional racism that, that's been uncovered here. When you say tip of the iceberg, lots of people are saying, uh, you know, in defence of uh, Jeremy Corbyn and this, look, look there, there isn't anything new in this documentary. We haven't learned anything new. It's same old, it's same old. Uh, and actually, the processes have changed. People like you and the former General Secretary, Ian Nicholl and others, you, know, you were working there at a time where, yeah, things were pretty slow in terms of dealing with this issue. People weren't on top of it, but now they're on top of it and things have changed. What would you say to that? I would say quite simply that here we are three years later um, and the outrage and heartbreak in the Jewish community is probably worse than ever. Um, so I, I don't think there'd be many um, Jewish people who've suffered as a result of this, this horror that would agree with that. And why do you think this problem has reared its ugly head in the Labour Party? Is it that there were anti-Semites in the party for years, decades even, who just weren't perhaps brave enough to speak up? Is it they were there and no one noticed when they did send, you know, anti-Semitic tweets or or, or posts on 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 Facebook or made speeches at, 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 in uh, in meetings on a wet Wednesday night or wherever? Um, is that happening, or did something change when Jeremy Corbyn came? leader? Um, something absolutely changed. Um, it, there's never been a situation before um, in which you, you had um, a high number of Jewish people in Parliament Square protesting about the Labour Party. Um, what, what happened when Jeremy became leader, um, as was discussed last night in the documentary, was, was that a safe space was created for anti-Semites. Um, whether or not that, that was intentional from Jeremy is, is irrelevant because it happened. Um, and so we've got this, this, this situation in which people with worldview, which is inherently conspiratorial and, and usually against Jews, um, find home in the Labour Party. Um, they, they feel safe there, they feel emboldened, and, and we now have this situation where, where many Jews are, are terrified of a Corbyn government. Why do these people who have joined a party which professes itself to be and has a very long, proud history of being anti-racist, uh, against, uh, you're tackling racism against uh, other ethnic minorities, why do you think these people are anti-Semitic? Where does this come from? Why uniquely do you think they see Jews as a minority ethnic group who, who, are not, who should not be defended or accorded equal rights? Um, for me, it's it's what I was just saying. It's, it, it stems from a. It's a I, I kind of um, delineate left anti-Semitism from from other forms of anti-Semitism. It stems from a conspiratorial worldview. Um, it stems from all the conspiracies, like the Rothschild conspiracies, the conspiracies that that Jews are tricksy, that they run the banks, that they run the media. Um, and you know, we saw some of those images last night on on the program and some of those tropes. Um, and of course, it it, it inevitably um, is bound up in criticism of Israel, of course, much of which is legitimate, but so often spills over into, into anti-Semitic tropes when you hold Jews accountable for the actions of Israel, where you have images like, like the one we saw last night. We've got the Star of David kind of implanted onto it into really shocking, shocking visual imagery. Um, do you believe, do you trust that Jeremy Corbyn can, will deal with this issue? Well, well, look, Jeremy Corbyn, as the leader of the party, like the head of any organisation, is, is ultimately responsible for those who act on his behalf. So AC members, staff, those who speak in his name. Um, and that's only right and proper um, as a political leader. All, all I can say is that, that we are three years into this crisis and it's worse than ever. Um, that, that doesn't speak to leadership which, which can or has dealt with this issue. Um, can I ask you, this is a, a typical tweet that I, I think is going out last night, a message I've tweeted out to say that you're on the show, a message saying from working class hero, ask him for an example of clear prejudice against Jewish people, i.e. anti-Semitism, not criticism of the state of Israel. Yet again, last night's documentary was all about pro-Palestine twonks who dislike Israel, but not the Nazi-type yeah. racism that keeps getting yelled about in the media. What would you say to that? I, I'd ask him to look at the, just as a, as a very, very quick example off the top of my head, I'd ask him to look at the... Um, footage of the young man who had a 45 film, minute film made about him which called him a filthy Jew. I'd say that's pretty, pretty outright anti-Semitism. Um, are you still a member of the Labour Party, Ben? I'm not, no. Could you see a time when you would return? On what circumstances? Um, I would return... Um, well, I will only return um, when Jeremy Corbyn is no longer leader of the party. And do you know other uh, Jewish people or other people who uh, have the same concerns about themselves not being Jewish but concerned about treatment to Jewish people who've also left the party? And we've Countless. seen obviously lots of MPs who've left. Countless members, friends, family. Um, you don't have to be Jewish to be horrified and, and 
just devastated by this. Um, and I know countless decent people who, who can't tolerate this anymore. And have um, you, just finally, have you had any reaction either online, on social media or in person uh, to, to you in terms of your, your willingness to speak out on this as a whistleblower? Yeah, I've had really, really wonderful, heartwarming messages of, of support from from um, several people, some of whom I've, I've never met or heard of. Um, and it's really, really kind of good to know the people, that there are good people on your side. Right now, though, let's turn our attention to the story that's very dominating uh, the news today. And this is this extraordinary documentary by the BBC last night on Panorama, uh, looking into anti-Semitism allegations in the Labour Party. Uh, John Ware is the uh, producer and presenter of that show, who uh, has spent many months uh, talking uh, to Labour Party staff and former Labour Party staff about what's actually been going on in the party. He ended up speaking to eight whistleblowers, former members and stuff who spoke out about why they chose to leave the party, why they chose to leave their jobs uh, and their concerns over not only the scale of anti-Semitism in the party but the failure of the leadership to deal with it and often the interference from the leader's office they claimed uh, in preventing action being taken. Well, let's talk now to John Ware, the producer and presenter of that show. Good morning to you, John. Good morning. Good morning. Um, now, um, there's been quite a big row over this. Uh, once this even emerged at the weekend that you'd, this documentary was uh, going to happen this week, already the attack started uh, from uh, many uh, close to the Labour leadership. Um, it was noted that uh, Jeremy Corbyn chose not to uh, speak to you during this documentary to answer any of these allegations, uh, many of them directed at people close to him in the leader's office, uh, but also uh, that no member of the Labour Party, no senior figures, no officials, uh, no shadow cabinet members, members have chosen to speak to any media this morning about this. Um, your documentary was titled, Is Labour Anti-Semitic? Did you answer that question? And what was the answer? Well, I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's for the BBC to determine whether Jeremy Corbyn or indeed the Labour Party is anti-Semitic. Um, personally speaking, I'm quite sure the vast majority of Labour Party members are not anti-Semitic. Uh, the issue really is whether the extent to which the leadership has dealt with this problem. And that is the issue that's now squarely in front of the um, the Equalities Commission, um, because uh, what they need, what they will be um, de deciding is whether the party has dealt properly, uh, robustly with um, uh, Jewish discrimination, and and, the, and there are you know, many papers and many witnesses, uh, statements of witnesses now before the commission. Do you expect anything to change as a result of this documentary? Uh, many people say, look, this is nothing new. Uh, yes, we've got talking heads. We've seen the, we're seeing the people who are making these claims, but uh, the Labour Party uh, have put out various statements and, uh, and uh, different various attack lines saying, look, you know, these are former disgruntled employees, that they're anti-Corbyn anyway. They would say that, wouldn't they? What's your response to that criticism from them? Um... Look, there, there were eight uh, former staffers on our programme last night um, uh, from the uh, former General Secretary down. Um, I think it's pushing it to suggest that, um, you know, all eight uh, were motivated by a, a desire to uh, undermine uh, the Labour Party's leadership. Um, my own assessment for what it is worth is that um, and, you know, I had many, many long conversations with each and every one of them, is that they were principally motivated by a disgust at the increase in anti-Semitism within the Labour Party, uh, the failure, um, the lack of leadership given to them to deal with this, and in some cases a difference of opinion about where the line what constituted what constitutes uh, uh, anti-Semitism. So I don't think, um, and, and they seem to me to be highly intelligent uh, individuals. They're pretty young. They uh, had a pretty firm grasp of evidence. And uh, I thought they were really rather impressive investigators, as a matter of fact. 
um, how easy I, was it? How easy was it to get them to speak to you? Were these people you called them up? They said, "Oh yeah, I can't wait to do a documentary for 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 you on Panorama," or, or did well, it involve quite a few weeks or even months of coaxing? No, it didn't really. Um, obviously, quite a number of conversations took place before they took the final decision, but um, they were all united in their desire to get this issue resolved and I think you know a lot of them felt had begun to feel complicit because they wanted to deal with it they wanted to deal with it in a way that they thought it should be dealt with and they felt they were being discouraged or in some cases obstructed and the longer they stayed there the longer they felt complicit in a process that they didn't want to be part of um, um, I, I mean I they they I mean, I have to say this, that I, I genuinely found them to be principled people who were doing this but out of principle, not out of, you know, political manoeuvring, as uh, Labour Party appears to be suggesting motivated them. I think that's uh, a pretty shabby uh, response to uh, the reasons. And, and were, were you yourself shocked by what they had to say and what their experiences have been? We spoke to uh, Ben Westerman, uh, one of those uh, you spoke to who used to be on the disputes panel as an investigation officer uh, for a couple of years. Um, when you when you spoke to them about what had happened, what they'd seen, what they had, were, were you shocked by anything, anything in particular that stood out for you? Y y yes, I was shocked. Um, I, I, I mean, we've known there's been a building anti-Semitism problem for the last few years but but I was I, I, I was shocked yes um, and um, and I think the other thing that comes so clearly across talking to them and talking to many many members ordinary Jewish members of the Labour Party is just what it's actually like to be a member of a constituency Labour Party a branch or a ward and you know become uh, the, 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 uh, you know, talked about, and you're 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 you know held responsible for things that the government of Israel has done in a way that they never were before. And um, uh, you know, I think a lot of you know, and 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 the, the, the discomfort, the the sort of discomfort that that a great many Jewish members of the Labour Party have felt, I think, is is terribly worrying. Um, and it. it you know, it shouldn't happen in any, in any political party for any minority. Um, Tom Watson, the deputy leader of the party, who has uh, been uh, more and more critical of Jeremy Corbyn on issues like Remain and uh, the need to tackle the anti-Semitism issue, he said last night in a tweet, I'm shocked, chilled and appalled by what I've just seen on Panorama. Hearing the testimony of party members and former staff was harrowing. They are not disaffected. They have been incredibly brave. Very serious questions now have to be answered. Um, what do you think those questions are, uh, John Ware, and having investigated this, well, what, what do you think the answers should be? Well, I think, I think perhaps the most important question is this, that um, a great many, not all, but um, a significant proportion of uh, anti-Semitism complaints uh, relate to the narrative over the Israel-Palestine conflict. There are very strong opinions held on both sides, obviously, and... Uh, I think that uh, there are, to be fair, there, uh, there are people in the, leader, in the leader's office who I think have <clears throat> attempted to um, redefine that narrative into a much more uh, nuanced and um, accurate uh, description as to how opposition to, quote, Zionism can morph into anti-Semitism. Um, <clears throat> now, um, I think... For myself, I think that one of the biggest challenges for the Labour Party to, to come up with a new narrative about how that conflict should be discussed and argued with, none of this, of course, minimising legitimate criticisms of Israel, but not importing sort of centuries-old tropes, templating them onto the conflict. And there has been some work, to be fair, in Mr Corbyn's office on that subject. Um, whether Mr. Corbyn is the leader who can change that narrative from the front uh, because of his uh, record as a backbencher and some of the people he's associated with and some of the things he's said is, uh, I think, an open question. But, you know, that's where the future lies. That's where 
I think, how this problem is going to be solved. Real leadership about changing the narrative, not diminishing legitimate criticisms and debate about this intractable conflict, but moving away from the kind of rigid and abusive, often, uh, commentaries that are made, personally abusive comments. Can I just ask you... Can I ask just one final issue? There's something has been raised a lot on social media this morning, uh, and this is uh, the Labour Party saying that uh, a tweet was uh, deliberately edited, sorry, a tweet, an, an email from Seamus Milne back in March 2018, which uh, he's the Director of Communications for Jeremy Corbyn, of course. It was deliberately uh, edited down uh, to basically misrepresent what he was saying. And this was about these accusations that the Labour leadership had been uh, uh, basically interfering uh, in the process of disciplining people, particularly when it related to Corbynistas. And uh, the the, the quote, the email that was quoted uh, was saying, something's wrong, sorry, sorry, Seamus Milne emailing, something's going wrong and we're muddling up political disputes with racism. I think going forward we need to review where and how we're drawing the line. Now, a Labour Party spokesman has said that the full sentence doesn't begin with the words uh, something's going wrong, it begins with the words but if we're more than very occasionally using disciplinary action against Jewish members for anti-Semitism, something's going wrong. Uh, they say this is malicious, selective mm. uh, and political Politically hostile uh, choice of uh, of editing. Why did you cut off the beginning of that quote? No, no, but this is not the case. The, 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 the what, what you're not or what isn't being included there is the final paragraph of that email, where uh, I think Mr. Milne refers to uh, um, separate from this case or mm. quite apart from this case. Uh, we we need a we need to review uh, we need to review the process now. Uh, the Labour Party is saying, uh, uh, even though uh, that last paragraph separates itself or appears to separate itself from the from the from what had gone on before, um, it's still related to the topic that had been discussed uh, previously, which was in relation to a particular case, uh, um, a member of the uh, uh, Jewish Voice of Labour who was very pro Corbyn, and I think was a political. Uh, the, the question was over. A, an individual who was a political ally of, of Mr. Corbyn, and uh, Mr. Corbyn him, had himself taken a particular interest in, okay. in this particular case. Um, so uh, we have reported uh, the, the, uh, the, the the relevant extract in that email, and we've reported the Labour Party's. Okay. We've reported the Labour Party's response to it. Okay. So thank you very much.